Come Okay, how's everybody doing? So we're gonna start painting the big warehouse here. There's some dark brown. Yeah, that'll do. I added a bit of black, uh, in this case, rubber black XF85. I don't have any flat black. Well, I have one bottle I'm saving. But I'm gonna use up some of this rubber black, which is really just green added to black, okay? Um, but uh, I just wanna talk about, uh, like a little bit about creativity you know, within the subject of scratch building, like when you build a layout, like let's just say a 10 foot by two foot layout, and you decide, you know, that you want to center it around trains or a railroad, but you want to scratch build all the buildings yourself, whether it's prototypically inspired, whether it's freelance, like I'm open to all of it, right? Because to me, it's art and there's no rules when you express yourself in your own hobby or your own railroad or whatever you want to call it. But you know, when you do little things like, um, you know, like little things are going to happen when you move away from, you know, manufactured kits, manufactured trees, manufactured everything, right? Which is fine, which you should use because not everybody can scratch build or wants to scratch build or can right away. It's a progressive thing where you sort of kit bash. Like that's how it started for me. I took a kit and I go, I want to add a door here. or I'm going to extend a wall or, you know, you build a modular kit and eventually it leads to this kind of thing when you get older. And you know, what? like as you get older and you begin to scratch build and, 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 and like, you know, whatever it is, wood or plastic or whatever the period too, things tend to come out from your childhood. Like um, they do for me, right? Like, like an example would be this open door right here. Okay. <laughs> now when we were kids in the 70s teen teenagers you know we hung around there were two big breweries <laughs> right off there was railway tracks there that we lived on practically and jumped the, you know the, the train there i mean times were different back then the police were different people were different you know it just you know like parents like you know our parents didn't know where we were half the time like we weren't raised by helicopter parents i'll tell you that our parents didn't know where we were either, but but they didn't really worry about us, you know. We were just kids growing up, you know, like uh, in this case down in Kitsilano by the beach, by the railroad tracks, you know, we used to go out on the salt chuck and we were all over the place, you know, uh, whether it was by skateboard, bicycle, car, whatever. But we used to hang around these warehouses and most notably breweries. <laughs> there was Carling O'Keefe's and uh, Molson's Brewery. <laughs> And, uh, you know, when you see open doors like this, it's a little bit of a reflection of what I remember. <laughs> you know, the police back then, they didn't worry, you know, they never really worried so much about perishables, you know. <laughs> and, you know, we used to uh, help ourselves once in a while on the way home, you know, with, you know, with some beer, you know. And we jump up on the landing and, you know, it would just blow you away it was from floor to ceiling you know the ceilings looked like they were 100 feet high full of every label you could think of and you know we just helped ourselves a little bit we returned the empties but anyway <laughs> anyway open doors like this like like that's where it comes from you know uh when i see trees like um you know when i build trees like i have all these imprints uh you know and impressions of trees you know, when I grew up that I remember and I, and I try to model them, you know. Uh, 
Um, so, you know, like a lot of it comes out, like that's what art is, you know, and I've talked about this before too. Like, I think that every model railroader is an artist, whether they realize it or not. It's just, I think there's a stigma to it. They don't want to admit that because it's might affect their masculinity or something. I don't know, whatever. Right. But, um, it is an art, uh, in every way. And, uh, when you finally admit that it is to yourself, it seems to explode you wide open to creativity and, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, greater skill achievement, and you just feel like you're you're liberated or something, right? Um, anyway, so you know, when you see me model, like when you see things in my model, you know, or diorama or whatever, um, you can almost bet that there was something there in my childhood that influenced what it is that I do, even, even if it seems a little unorthodox. You know, like it doesn't fit or, you know, might seem strange, but there's almost always a reason for it. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, go over the next layer with some gray. In this case, I just have a bottle of XF66, just a light gray, and the gray helps to tone down the darker overspray away from your engravings. Uh, covers it better than white wood. You have to use a lot more white to cover that. So you want to cover it gradually. You know, one of the interesting uh, aspects of thinned IPA paint like this is you get a little bit of the overspray and, you know, it can work in your favor. You can actually wipe it away. You can see it leaves effects there. Sometimes those kind of things when you're doing weathering, especially on buildings, like works in your favor, see? You know, you can do that at whatever stage of the game you want. This is part of that creative process and discovery, right? So I never sweat that stuff. I never worry about it because I welcome that kind of stuff. But that's good on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of this gray. Uh, this isn't super thin because it's more of a, it's sort of a primer covering layer, which uh, I should mention as well that, all XF to me a paint is primer, like the XF flat. It's just primer. It's high quality primer. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and down motion like this, and I'm not going to spray directly into these grooves here, but I'm going to let the paint just fly over it or over spray over it, and uh, I'm just going to slowly cover it up and down leave it thin don't cover it all up because you want to be able to read it like you want to read your layers and say okay I kind of like what's happening there right like you're creating opportunities and the more opportunities you have for layers and filters the better so you don't want to lose them all too fast you want to retain them in the paint process which is just simply laying on a light coverage and you can see how it, like, look what it does to the doors, see? That's the fundamental of just layers, right? See how it's just picking up on an angle and just picking up the tops. And then you can stay a little bit longer in one spot, see? See how it changes? Okay, so I put in the, the dark umber, you know, relief cuts in, you know, uh, in between the slabs and around the doors. Then I've laid on some um, shades of uh, light gray, in this case XF66, just to kind of knock down the umber and to get some color onto the panels. Now I'm going to take uh, XF19 Sky Gray. I really like this color. It's a nice sort of uh, neutral gray. And uh, this is... Uh, a brand new bottle and so what I do is I top it up almost I stir it and then top it up almost to the top and that's a basic pretty good opaque coverage there but I don't want that so I have an empty bottle here of XF19 Sky Gray so what I'm going to do is take this now that it's been mixed with 50% IPA not 50% proof but the bottle 50% once again I use 99% because you get the best bang for your buck if you buy the 99% IPA, right? 
So I'm just going to pour like about half of this um, in there. And then put that aside and then I can top that up again to the top with IPA. So I've I've multiplied my paint already four times, right? Okay, so sometimes when you buy in Tamiya, you look inside and you go, oh, what a ripoff. It's only like, you know, this much in there. But if you shoot it through an airbrush, you'll get over that real quick. If you're uh, thinning with IPA. So uh, let's have a look at this color now. It's got a fairly thin ratio to it. Um, once again, if you don't like it or if you feel it's too heavy, just thin it a bit more. Or if it's too thin, you can add a little more pigment or you can just work the area over more. You can see this area down here by number two bay. It's like, well, why didn't he cover these? He, he did it here, but not... I just want randomness. Like, I just saw that and I just thought, ah, you know, that's that feeling, right? I'm just going to leave that, right? I don't know what it's going to turn out to be, really, as a panel, but... I'm not going to sweat that because I'm going to come back and it's always there's always going to be sort of a distinction in the panels rather than just a one white opaque building, right? So let's have a look here and see what this looks like. Yeah, and yeah, it's not bad. What do I have for PSI there? Okay, I want to. 45 PSI. Yeah, I'll just go with this. Okay, so once again, I want to get in close now, and I still have that faded white, which has a high percentage of IPA. And this is some of the advantages that when you're building up layers with IPA based Tamiya flat, you can still play with the paint because it's still soft, like it's set, but it's not cured. And so you can get in closer with higher pressure and create interesting effects, okay, that are very subtle, that help add a little personality to the, to the panel, okay? So let's have a look at that. We'll start with this panel here and then I'll just move down to the door. Um, in fairly close. Okay, so now I've just got some pure white, okay, very thin, like thinner than all the other um, layers that I put on, because I don't want this to go on opaque, right? I want it to just be like a stain almost, okay? So I'm just going to work a little bit of it in, just up and down, just to give some hints. And once again, because it's thin, it's not going to look pure white, because some of the grays are going to affect it, because it's a filter, okay? Um, I'll work some in here, you can see. And the loading bays, as you can see, there, they already have a cementy look. There's so many variations of overspray there, just a few washes later, dark washes, pin wash here and there. Uh, what have you will uh, help that area pop uh, in terms of having that sort of cement look. And in this case, I won't be putting the footings on the bottom of these stairs until it's finally finished because they just get knocked off or damaged unless you uh, wait to put those on later. Okay, so now I have it where I want it right now, uh, for now, okay, um, I'm getting very close. So before I flat coat this with 
uh, Vallejo Spray Balm Matte Varnish. I want to uh, do a little bit of an a uh, IPA strip, uh, isopropyl alcohol only high pressure strip along the base of the building. And uh, I'll just do some of that now. And then uh, once that's done, then I'm going to seal the whole deal. And then I'll revisit it tomorrow with some uh, wet on wet. Okay, so uh, let's have a look here and just see. We'll start below these bay doors here first. So I spray, I wet it down first. And then I go in really close, okay? I better crank the pressure up here just a little bit. And turn that off so it doesn't kick on. Like I say, I can repair some of this later, okay? See that there? I like that. That's that's just a... I like that. Okay. So you see what's happening there? Okay, so here's just a preliminary uh, dry run with all that uh, painting, you know, that I showed. You can see the, you know, the difference, right, from the white plastic, like you'd see it axed in there, and all those other model parts I haven't done yet. But uh, sorry for the shadow. It's just the nature of all the lighting I have. So uh, see the difference there? There's a void there. That's for the baby warehouse, which is already on, almost finished as well. And it's starting to, you know, fill nicely. It's starting to make sense, right? Like a big warehouse like that, you know, like you want to instill that kind of character because it's such a long span. Because it's based on a prototype. But this is only one third or, or pardon me, uh, just over half the length of the prototype. It's a huge warehouse. Okay. So, but, you know, I compressed it for the purposes of having an industry or two here. And uh, so far, she's starting to come into her own. I really like it. So, okay. So we'll press on.